everybody, Christopher Green, AMTV Alternative Media Television. Please take a moment to like and share this video. Today I want to talk about your pyramid of preparedness. I believe that you tuning in have a very short window, a very small window of opportunity to prepare and to figure out where you've been weak in this current crisis. Did you not have enough food storage? If you didn't, you should buy more. Uh, did you not have enough cash on hand? If you didn't, then you should get cash. If you weren't prepped with your investments, then you should prep with your investments. If you weren't prepped with your relocation strategy or your primary residence or your bug out location, then you need to prep with that. Maybe it's your community. Maybe it's relationships. Maybe it was your involvement at the church, preparing yourself for what's to come, preparing your soul, getting closer to God. As we've seen, and I've been talking a lot on this channel, that that really is the most important preparation that you could do. And that, of course, this has brought myself included, all of us to our knees to realize what matters the most. You know, it makes me think of the scripture of Jonah who defied God. God told him, instructed him, said, Jonah, get up, go to Nineveh and proclaim to them that they must repent, but he refused. Instead, he tried to go to, what was it, to Tarshish. And as he was on his way in that ship, God sent epic waves. He sent all kinds of chaos in the open waters. They eventually had to throw him out. He was swallowed by a fish. And notice how God eventually forced Jonah's hand until he then arrived at Nineveh, as he should have done in the first place, and, of course, preached the gospel, uh, the glory of Christ, and Nineveh eventually repented at that point. I think that can be used as an allegory, a metaphor, so to speak, for many of you tuning in. And this goes for myself as, as well where our hand has been forced. God has shown us his amazing glory, his amazing will, and he has put all of us on our knees, fixated, at attention, where we've realized many for the first time in our lives, or it's been working on our hearts, as it's been working on mine, to reprioritize. And I really believe that this was a shot across the bow, a wake-up call, a test run, so to speak, and a simulation for what I believe is ahead. And so I wanna talk about preparation. I also wanna talk about the three phases of correction or collapse that we're currently experiencing in the US financial system and where I think this is headed, where I think this is going. You know, initially you have, and if we study 1929, as Warren Buffett has encouraged all of us to do recently with his recent telecast, first thing that happens is you get a shock. You get a panic, and I we saw that in 2009, and of course we're seeing that today in 2020. That then follows what I've dubbed hopium. Hopium, oh, it's gonna be a V-shaped recovery. It's gonna be a U-shaped. We're gonna go back to normal, just like 2008 and 09. That can also be determined, you can call that the correction phase, which I think we're in now. We notice that the more bad news we get, the higher unemployment soars, the more people default and bankruptcies ensue, and we see winners and losers being picked by our government now as a result of nationalizing industries like the too big to fail banks or insurance companies. Uh, now we're seeing across the board really the nationalization of everything, the airlines. That's why Warren Buffett sold all of his airline stocks because we can only expect that he's expecting the worst, which is why he's been telling all of us to study 1929 followed by the worst, most painful stage, which is the bankruptcy stage. It's the insolvency stage. It is the deflation stage. Now, I think we're in the hopium stage now. I'm actually expecting, as I said yesterday, a short to medium term rally across the global financial system. I think we have that now, right now. I think that's what's happening. I think people will falsely cling to that and think things are going back to normal, but I do not think that that is the case at all. If we look at our authoritative sources and the official sources, they're telling us that there's now a mutated strain of this mess that is far worse than the one before it. They're telling us that travel, especially international travel, will not open for years. They're saying hotels will likely not reopen for years. People are stopping spending because their jobs haven't come back and many Americans are not expecting, uh, I think, or falsely expecting those jobs to come back and they're simply not. This goes also for our children and our school system. All these systems that have been built on a dollarized model, also known as the petrodollar, that I don't think is going to last much longer. So what happens in an environment like this? I've been talking about this for years. Sorry, there's a lot of wind today. 
What happens in an environment like this is the whole system is revised. They move to a new system and they change the rules. They do this with bailouts. They do this with new baskets, digital baskets of currency. Notice that Nancy Pelosi in her first round of stimulus that we just, well, we had $3 trillion just come out. We've got more trillions planned uh, to bail out the big mega corporations, uh, pensions and these kinds of things. And I'll get to that in a moment. She actually introduced a digital currency. Notice that she did that. And then it was taken out by Republicans, but they're basically, this is the simulation and the testing model, the testing ground for what's coming. So this is, please share this video, by the way. This can help a lot of people, save a lot of people from, from what's to come. Please pray on that. Please, please find it in your heart to like and share across your social media networks. This is the biggest economic event that the world has ever seen at least if we're looking at history over the last 150 years. The only comparison, as Warren Buffett has encouraged us to study with his book recommendation over the weekend, is 1929, is the Great Depression, is the collapse of the 1930s, a period of massive deflation, a period of suffering, and a period of a just extreme correction. Adjusting the camera there. Let's go over some hardcore facts for a minute. Hardcore facts are, are if we look at PMI, which measures manufacturing and production worldwide, whether or not it's China, Australia, New Zealand, European nations, anywhere in the world, we have seen the Purchasing Managers Index, which is a measure of manufacturing, completely be eviscerated, completely collapse. The charts point straight downward. If we look at unemployment numbers, and Goldman Sachs is suggesting we'll have an unemployment rate of 20 plus percent, far worse than the depression. We have how many million now? I've lost count. Tens of millions of people unemployed. That number continues to skyrocket. It's gone parabolic and completely vertical. So we need to understand that this is not just USA centric. This is a, it's not isolated to a particular country. This is a worldwide event. Projections of GDP will be down 20 to 30% quarter over quarter everywhere in the world, not just the United States. This is why Warren Buffett's sitting on a third of Berkshire Hathaway's, ass, Hathaway's assets in cash. He says there's no attractive valuations, valuations because he's expecting prices to go much, much lower. And this is why he sold all the airline stocks because he's expecting no travel, ghost planes, bankruptcy protection, and this will probably be wrapped in, into the federal government's coffers. So the bottom line is there is no V-shaped recovery. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. Take it for what it is. There is no U-shaped recovery. That's also my opinion. What I've been looking at is this, which is a chart of the 1929 Dow Jones Industrial Average. Notice we have the initial collapse followed by a six-month period of hopium, the correction phase, the hope period, and a rally followed by a collapse so bad and so grave in the United States and worldwide that not only did it lead to a world war, World War II, but took over a decade to break even and subsequently saw the U.S. financial system lose close to 90% of its value peak to trough. From the roaring 20s to the 1929 crash to the spike in the period of hopium of the V-shaped or U-shaped recovery, which never happened, followed by a seismic event a seismic correct correction, deflation across the board, and no recovery for over a decade. So what else can we learn from this? And how can we prepare with our preparedness pyramid, right? Food and water, where were you weak? Defense, uh, your home life, relocation, your spiritual life, your church, your relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, these kinds of things you need to think about. So we had a six month bounce in 1929. I think that that is what is currently happening. Where does this lead to? We need to look at the demographic pull and shift. I've been talking about this for year with, years with the baby boomers. The baby boomers are at a period of time where they're getting older and they need access to liquidity, cash, and capital for their daily living expenses. Now, what happens when market, markets seize like they currently have done? Uh, pensioners sell, right? They need that money. They need to protect whatever nest egg it is that they have left. They also have obligations to pay their rent, to pay for health care, uh, to, to pay for expenses, to pay for the day to day. So we've had this shift for a while. It's an upside down pyramid where we have most of the of what the, was the earning years of the baby boomers are over. 
They've all moved into retirement and now they're dependent on the system. Many of you tuning in, that's not a bad thing, it's just where the facts are. And they're dependent on the system and they need those assets to sustain their current lifestyle. They're, they're no longer adding value. I don't say this in a negative way, but they're no longer adding value to the system. You then have the younger generation, the millennials and everyone else in that basket that doesn't isn't creating income, okay, because there's record job losses and isn't able to sustain uh, the system without rebuilding it as like what we're talking about today. And everything is just upside down. That's the point. So what we have is an everything bubble. We have an everything bubble. And this goes for stocks. This goes for bonds. This goes for real estate. This goes for index funds, ETFs. I think there's going to be a huge wake-up call. And Americans are going to find that those are not riskless investments. Uh, but they're going to have a lot of liquidity shocks and a lot of problems. And I think are going to be prove to many Americans to be very, very dangerous. You have lower spending. It means that we're going to have a debt crisis in the United States of America. This means that we're going to have a deflationary spiral in things like home, cars, student loans. And because there's not enough cash flow to support the debt, we are going to have a credit market collapse. What does that mean? What happens when you have a credit collapse? Sorry, I'm moving the camera around so much today. It's a little bit windy. When you have a credit collapse, when money comes out of the system, and this is what people need to understand about the bailouts. The bailouts are going to the mega corporations, but notice how the PPE loan application, you can't apply for a loan. Notice how I noticed many of my friends that are unfortunately unemployed have still not gotten their unemployment check. Still, it's May. What is it, May 5th today? Uh, Cinco de Mayo. And they still don't have their unemployment check. By the way, that reminds me, I need to wish one of my good friends a happy birthday. It's his birthday uh, today on Cinco de Mayo. We're going to be doing a Bible study once a week now. Uh, which maybe we'll even do that in some format here at AMTV. Because of this, you have a rush to dollars. Okay, there's some economic truths to this. Because of this, we're going to have a short-term rush to liquidity, cash, and dollars. Eventually, this will cl collapse the dollar system, otherwise known as the petrodollar, right? Backed by oil. That's why we've seen the collapse in oil. And we're going to have a de-dollarization event that is going to lead to an entirely new system based on digital, which is what Nancy Pelosi introduced recently, and which will be the basis of certain deflationary assets, which I've been talking about for years. These are all tools for your financial toolkit. Whether or not this is gold and silver, and I encourage you to buy gold and silver. If you don't have enough or you haven't gotten started, click the link below. I've been selling gold and silver for a very long time. If you don't buy it from me, go buy it from someone else. There's also going to be a move to blockchain. There's going to be a digital basket of currencies that lead the world out of this multi-decade, long-term collapse of the system. And what's going to happen are central banks, this is happening now, and governments are going to absorb record amounts of losses like we haven't seen since the 1930s. I believe if we take a look at total global debt, and we include things like pensions, which are bankrupt here in the United States, and there's going to be a lot of problems with this for many retirees in the uh, long term. That is all going to be absorbed by the government, by central banks. And I believe there's about $50 trillion outstanding at this current point in history, in this current point in time. Why is this video important? Why should you share this? You should share this video because, again, the takeaway is we have a very short window of opportunity. It's going to open up a little bit. They're going to start opening up the economy and then they're going to close it and they're going to lock it up. Okay, we are already seeing warnings of more, more virulent strains. We're already seeing warnings of, you know, certain things that they're going to have to put in place in order for you to, to travel, like checking your temperature and immunity passports and these kinds of things. This will shut down the entire economy. And these jobs, in my opinion, are not coming back. We've seen what the essential businesses are and what the non-essential businesses are. Hertz, for example, declaring bankruptcy. Gold's Gym, declaring bankruptcy. The airlines, soon to de they've already been nationalized, but soon to declare bankruptcy. All the hotel industry, bankrupt. All of these service-based industries and jobs are not coming back in the short run. It'll take a very, very long time 
to repair all of this. Also interesting to note, I noticed there's a meme going around about this railway system that's supposed to go all across the United States. And I noticed people are saying, oh yeah, that should be built. Wouldn't that be a good thing if they built that? I was looking at that going like, are you kidding me? That looks like the Hunger Games train network of the super state cities of the future of the dystopia that we're warned about. Now, there will be public works projects. I do see Trump and local government state officials putting Americans back to work, which they should do because what are you going to do with people, let's say, one third of the entire country unemployed? They're going to have to do something. They're also rolling out UBI, universal basic income, and all these kinds of things. The point of this video, however, uh, is not to tell you how bad things are going to be, in my view. And I'm not the only one saying this. It's so that you take action as a part of your preparation, your pyramid of preparation, and put these things into your toolkit. So again, I leave you with this today. Write this down with pen and paper. Where have you been weak in this current crisis? What did you learn were items that you needed that you didn't have? Again, that could be long-term food storage. That could be your relationships with your community, strengthening your relationships with friends and family on the ground at your church. This could have been defense. This could have been cash liquidity. Notice how, again, there's going to be a rush to the dollar. And what I think is going to happen economically is that there's going to be a crushing of the shorts because there's trillions of dollars of sovereign nations around the world that have shorted dollars. But as there's a rush to that liquidity, and that liquidity is not going to come to you. It's not going to come to the people. It, the bailouts go to the mega corporations, as we've already seen. It's going to go directly to the banks to keep them open. But however, they're going to cut credit lines to consumers and you're not going to, it's not going to be easy to get a mortgage. It's not going to be easy to get a loan. It's not going to be easy to get access to the credit that you need. Because of that, because of that, you need to prepare accordingly. Again, we've talked about this yesterday. What is real wealth? Real wealth is not fancy things. It's not a fancy home. Uh, it's not a cool car or a cool watch. Those things are fun. You know, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I know some of you out there probably collect cars or you like watches or these kinds of things, but that's not real wealth. Real wealth is food. Real wealth is water. Real wealth is farmable land. Uh, real wealth is cattle. Real wealth is community. Real wealth is your church. Real wealth is spiritual wealth, your, your belief in God and, and your practice of that. Uh, what we need to do now, and this is what I want to encourage you all, we need to start through our actions building the better world that we want. We need to be helping people on an epic scale, but we have to do it through our day-to-day -day action. Again, if you want a better world, then let's work together. If you want a better world, a better city, town, state, local community, build that community. Support the people that you care about. Support and do business with local and medium-sized businesses. Make sure you do that. Help them so that they don't go out of business. You understand? We all need to work together, but we also need to hit it ourselves and prepare and be prudent for the storm that we know is coming. You know, a lot of people laughed at Noah, for example. He said, get in the ark. I'm building the ark. God told me to put together the ark. And they laughed at him, and then the flood came. Okay, we've seen the same thing in this current crisis. And the worst thing you could do right now, this is my opinion, is to go back to thinking that it's normal when it's not. And not take advantage of the opportunity, whatever short window is that we have, maybe that three to six month period I described in the Great Depression where they had the hopium rally before it all fell apart. Bottom line, this is moving to a new economic system. It is, I believe we are going to have new lows in the U.S. financial markets. I believe stocks, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the NASDAQ, although the NASDAQ will tech will probably hold up a little bit better than the other indices could experience another 80% plus decline from here. Here's what's interesting about it. That doesn't even have to happen for what we're talking about to actually transpire. They've got to reset the entire system. They're going to move to a new formula, so to speak. They're moving to new currency. They're moving to a different type of system. And this is not just going to affect the United States. It's going to be a worldwide event. Now, Trump's doing the right thing. I'll leave this on here. He's trying to reopen up the economy. He's, you know, getting his uh, political rallies up to speed again. He's out in Arizona today. You know, we're getting kind of the Team America stuff going back going. But the risks, we haven't de-risked from, from any of this. The risks are higher now than they were before. The consequences of this, and this is why Warren Buffett warned about this, the consequences are, are actually far more grave now 
and he warned of extreme consequences than they've ever been. Warren Buffett's going to sit on the sidelines until we get another 80% drop or a 50% drop or whatever it turns out to be. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, obviously. I don't have a crystal ball. But there's a reason why these guys are sitting on cash, liquidity, and they're waiting to take action. This is why you need to take action. You need to look at gold. You need to look at silver. You need to look at your community. You need to look at your spiritual life. You need to utilize these tools in an effective way to provide for your family, to build the communities, the localities, and the future that you want, to provide for your kids, to provide for the care of the elderly. And we need to provide people hope through action. I love you guys so much. Click the link below. Support us. Visit us at amtvgold.com. See our offering. I love you guys so much, and I'll talk to all of you very soon. It's Christopher Green, amtvgold.com. Click the link below. We are currently in unprecedented times. It is so important that you remain vigilant. You're prepped. I've said for years, over a decade, that I believe, humbly, all of you should have at least 5 to 10% of your total net worth in gold and silver. And here's the reason why. We have unprecedented debt in this country. We've had unprecedented bailouts, loans. Take a look at the national debt clock. We are hitting trillions and trillions of dollars unlike anything we've ever seen in human history. If you do not take action now, you're going to continue to see the value of the U.S. dollar collapse in the United States and worldwide, in my opinion. Click the link below. Visit us at amtvgold.com. We pride ourselves with Midwestern values. We have great customer service. We have shipping three to five weeks on all products, which is standard industry-wide. Working around the clock 24-7 to get you what you need straight to your door. Comes with insurance, shipping, everything that you need. Also, we just got in stock. New American Eagle Gold Coins. Those were out of stock for several weeks. Just got them back in the store for a limited time. Make sure to get those. Get our American Buffalo. Also, please consider our silver AMTV proprietary stackers. 10-ounce, 5-ounce coins, 100-ounce kilo stacker silver. It's a great opportunity to dollar cost average into these positions now to protect your family from the storm that we know is ahead. Again, remain vigilant. Click the link below. Please consider us at amtvgold.com. I love you guys so much. And Jesus Christ is king.